I'm Jack Kennedy, and we're here to bring you the latest in MMA. My name's Hunter Boss, and what the boss says goes. What is up, everyone? My name is Keelan McNamara, and you already know what time it is. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the MMA Island Podcast. I am Jack Kennedy alongside Keelan McNamara and Hunter Boss. Let's go ahead and get right into the news. Um, surprisingly, a lot of UFC fighters have been arrested over the past couple of days. Um, the one we're going to be talking about is Jorge Masvidal uh, for sucker punching Colby Covington in the face, knocking his tooth out. Um, just a really fun incident overall. Uh, Hunter, yeah. what are your thoughts on this whole thing? Uh, I mean, he said he was going to punch those fake teeth out. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think it was extremely, extremely unprofessional. I mean, they just fought two weeks ago. If he wanted to do anything to Kobe, then he should have. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to wait for him outside of a steakhouse to to get his revenge or so called. But it, it was just extremely stupid on his part. I, he's losing fans by the minute. Uh, he lost me as a really good fan, I would say. I was a huge Jorge Masvidal fan. Now, um, I'll, I mean, I'll root for him in his fights now, but I won't follow him outside of the UFC too much other than what I have to. Uh, Jorge Masvidal, extremely disappointed in his actions. I mean, he he got arrested, got fined. Uh, if you guys don't know, he, I mean, he sucker punched Colby Covington outside of a steakhouse. Just real stupid. I mean, uh, I mean, he told Ariel Hawani a few years ago, though, which is kind of funny that he's got one of the best sucker punches in the yeah. game. I don't know if that's <laughs> foreshadowing, obviously. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was extremely unprofessional. Stupid thing that Jorge Masvidal did. Um, I, I'm more of a fan of Colby Covington than I am for him now. So I, I, I hate to say it, but that's what it is. Yeah, this is this is not a good situation. No matter what way you try and slice it, it's just not a good situation. However, I can see both sides of the same coin, and I'll go into that in a little more depth right now. Um, look, it was a bitch move. It just was. Um, whether you're a Jorge fan, whether you're whatever, it was a bitch move. It just was. Um, the first side of the coin is is you absolutely, and as someone who's done a law degree, I can tell you this from my own uh, somewhat experience, you absolutely cannot go around assaulting people as they come out of steakhouses. It is illegal. Not to mention that, but for the love of God, don't go on to social media and claim credit for that illegal action. What are you doing, Jorge? I mean, it, it, it's just a bad look. It's a really bad look. And he got what he deserved. He deserved to be arrested. He deserved to be thrown in a cell. And, you know, he probably will get off with it because he's a big name in the UFC. But if that were me or you or anybody else, I think we all know the story would be quite different. However, because we switch it up on the show and we always keep it interesting and we're always fair, I am going to go into the other side of things as well. I'm not, I'm not justifying what Jorge Masvidal did because it was wrong. Literally, according to the law, it was wrong. However, there is a degree of you run your mouth, you get what's coming to you. And Ho Colby Covington is not without blame whatsoever either. Both guys have said repeatedly it's on site when they see each other in the street. So, you know, Colby's played his part in this as well. And, you know... I'm going to go into the wider issue of this towards the end, but look, you talk about someone's family, you're overstepping the line. I don't give a shit who you are or what you do. You talk about someone's ex-wife, you talk about someone's kids, there's no need to go there. And Colby Covington has been playing with fire for far too long, and now it's come back to bite him in the ass. I'm not saying it was right, but he was warned it was coming, and it did happen. Now, he should have done it in the octagon. I absolutely agree with that. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, you act like a tough guy. You are going to get the consequences of that right or wrong. You know, Jorge Masvidal is from the streets. He came up fighting in backyards. Something like this was never going to be beyond him. He said he would do it, and he did. Now, those are both sides of the coin. Um, 
I think you can kind of justify it if you really wanted to. It is illegal, but Colby, you know, you did play your part in this as well. It wasn't unprovoked, was it? Let's be honest. But right or wrong, yes or no, Jorge or Colby, this speaks to a much deeper issue within the UFC. And Jack said perfectly in the intro to the segment, the amount of people getting arrested isn't funny. It really, really is not. And I blame Conor McGregor for a lot of this. You know, don't get me wrong. Controversy. I blame him too. <laughs> yeah. Fuck don't get me here. wrong. I blame yeah. John Jones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Controversy <laughs> sells fights. It's always been the nature of the fight game. It always will be. But when it came to the Habib Nurmagomedov situation in 2018, the fact that the sneak was not cut off the head then has allowed this to happen and will allow it to forever continue. This WWE bullshit of attacking people in the street like animals, damaging property, knocking people's teeth out, it's not on, you know, and it should not be on. Dana should have taken control of this from the beginning and probably fired Connor for what he did. And we would not be, of course, he was never going to do that. I'm not saying that's the case, but he needed to do something then. And now he can't do anything because we're too far removed from that point. The point is, this is just a poisonous situation all around. And someone needs to go to jail for this because there has to be an end or there will never be an end. Um, you know, Jorge Masvidal deserves to be punished for this, but Colby, you had this coming. I'm not I'm not saying Jorge's right, but don't chat shit and then expect to get away with it and hide behind people when you get the consequences of what you say. You know, this is the problem with social media. Social media has given people a barrier for far too long of chatting absolute BS and getting no consequences for it. And that's, that is just what happens. I'm not saying Jorge's justified, but, you know, you, you poke at the devil and you knock on the devil's door. Eventually, the devil's going to answer you and he's going to give you what you've been asking for. And plus, claiming Rolex damages, not very gangster, Colby. Not very gangster. I'm going to leave it there. That's my take on this whole thing. Jack, what have you got for us? Real quick, before I get into my take, uh, Keelan, I have a question for you. With a law degree, who would you rather defend, Masvidal or Connor this weekend? Oh, Christ. I'd rather defend <laughs> either of them. Um, well, I wouldn't want to defend Jorge because he's admitted to doing what he did. You know, I, I can't defend that shit. You've gone online and claimed credit for it. Come on. Um, I mean, I, I guess... You got Connor... the video of Connor in the car going 150 miles uh, down the road, though. I mean... I mean, UFC fighters aren't the smartest creatures, are they? They're not exactly mafia material, but no. Uh, I wouldn't exactly want to be defending anybody that's been arrested recently because they've all been too effing stupid to, to not hide it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's truly ridiculous. So we're obviously we're talking about this one. And the reason we're talking about it is because it's uh, first off there was what was it it was connor masvidal and i feel like there was something else that came up too that i'm forgetting but there was a bunch of news of just legal issues that's been going on with mma fighters recently um most notably obviously connor and masvidal the reason we're not talking about connor is because basically this is a regular occurrence now where he's going to be almost doing something stupid with a car punching an old man, uh, some <laughs> sexual assault allegations so we're, we're moving on past connor at this point um for masvidal right but where, where I stand on this is the sport we love, the sport we talk about is the only sport uh, other than, than boxing, some other combat sports where you can literally beat somebody for, for, for talking trash and everything and get paid to do it and to get views to do it and do it legally. And he had 25 whole minutes to do it two ish weeks ago and was not able to accomplish that goal. And Colby Covington did that. So you could say what you want. <laughs> Posting the video is so stupid. Not only did he post the video, he then pleaded not guilty afterwards. So good luck to Jorge Mazadal with everything he's doing. But like you guys said, this is actually a very serious issue. Um, whoever you trace it back to, I agree with what you said. Um, it, it, it's, it's a bad look for everybody, but especially the sport as a whole. Whenever you have one of its stars and Jorge Mazadal, go ahead and do that. And then, like you said, Colby Covington, which honestly is the most fitting Colby Covington move of all time, is like, oh yeah, we're gonna claim damages, we're gonna you know press all the charges and everything, uh, and that's just because those are who those guys are. I agree with you, Keelan. Uh, Jorge Masvidal is a guy that if you're talking about his family like that, he's going to go do something. Um, and Colby Covington, quite simply, is the guy who who would do what he did. Um, 
I, I just, I, Hunter, I agree with what you originally said. Um, a very, very stupid move from Masvidal. Uh, I, I can't respect that. I can't respect him for that at all. Um, it's just a bad look. It's a terrible look. And I, I just hate it so much. And also, Keelan, I think you're right. I think he is going to have to be arrested for this because how do you get out of this? It's, it's a straight up assault. That's why you have the sport. Even if they wanted to, you could say, okay, let's go to ATT or let's go to a neutral gym and we're going to like spar it out again if they needed to do that, which it's ridiculous still. This was more Jorge Masvidal, I really think, not being able to handle the loss, getting angry, getting upset about that, taking it out on Colby Covington. And also, and, and this might just be me in a bit of conspiracy theory here, but I think the Nelk boys played a major role in this because they were yeah. posting the location of where Colby Covington was at. I feel like they were kind of inciting Jorge Masvidal to come over and do something. And I think they might have got what they wanted to. And then that gets more views and everything. So I don't know about that for sure, but there's just a lot of layers to this incident and none of it looks good, especially for Jorge Masvidal. Um, I think we're all in agreement, a very, very dumb move for him. Well, guys, let's go ahead and transition to the best of the best. Um, and for the best of the best today, we're probably talking about the best of the worst, if that makes sense. Um, we're doing the most wasted potential in MMA history. Hunter, who do you think that would be? I'm a weird one. Okay. okay. I, 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 was, I, was, I was working today. I was thinking to myself, who is the most, you know, like wasted potential fighter? Okay. And I, I couldn't think of that that many because I think I think fighters in general are pretty good. But one I will say is Brock Lesnar. Now let me explain why. All right. Uh, he has the build of any person who wants to be a cage fighter ever. You know, he is the biggest, strongest dude around. But the thing in which makes him so wasted as a fighter and potential, like waste potential in general, is that he couldn't really take a clean punch ever. You know, like if anyone hit him, yeah, like yeah. with, a, with a, a, some sort of power punch, he would almost fold immediately and, and start getting ground and pounded away. And second off, his striking really wasn't that good, if we're being honest here. Like when it comes to heavyweight striking, you need like pretty damn good striking. Yeah. He had great wrestling to back it up, and I'll give him that. You know, he's kind of, Kind of like Daniel Cormier and how he had great wrestling there, but he isn't like Daniel Cormier and the fact that he can't strike or take a punch. So when I think of fighters with potential like wasted, I think of Brock Lesnar. I think if he if he, if he really tried to train and he tried trained his body and he trained his mind to actually take a punch and or um, you know deliver a punch, he could have been a fantastic fighter, a probably even better champion than he already was. He only wrestled, basically, if, if we take a look at his career. He, he really only took his opponent down to the ground. He would stand up and strike every now and then, but usually when he did, he would get, you know, hurt. So I'm going to go with Brock, Brock Lesnar, as strange as that call might be. I actually like that. I yeah. see where you're coming from, Hunter. I, I, I like the thinking. I'm going to go very left field with this. And most of you, well, you both might know who this is. I'm not too sure. But I'm going to go with a guy who's actually from England called Lee Murray. Okay. Yeah. And if you don't know who Lee Murray is, you you might remember he was arrested for being involved in an armed robbery in England where over 50 million pounds were stolen. Um, that might ring a few bells. Uh, but when you dig deeper beneath the headlines, of which there were many, um, Lee Murray was an animal of a fighter. He really, really was. You know, he was one of the first fighters that I've ever seen from our general part of the world that had just elite jiu-jitsu, elite striking. The guy was a killer. You know, if you look at Paddy Pimlet now with like flying triangles and stuff, Lee Murray was doing that back in the early 2000s. He was the man and he was about to be the man. I actually think he has one win in the UFC if I'm not wrong, I think he does. But then I think in 2005, he was stabbed outside a nightclub in Mayfair, which is in London. And then he was arrested. Then for whatever reason, I will never understand. He was arrested for being a part of an armed robbery scheme. And basically his life was taken away from him after that. I think he's in his 40s now. But obviously his MMA career 
gone down the drain for being arrested naturally. So I th- there's too many obvious choices to mention, and some of them kind of fulfill their potential. But if I have to go left field and go original, as I've got to give him credit, Hunter did. Mine's Lee Murray. That is very original, and I like it a lot. Some really uh, uh, variety here. I love it. Um, for me, I'm going to pick another champion as well, which is why it's fascinating Ooh. that we're choosing this, right? Yeah. I'm going to go with Johnny Hendricks as the most wasted potential in, in MMA yeah. history. This dude was walking through people. He had the wrestling. He was one of those. He's a guy that uh, MMA has really developed into being that someone that has elite wrestling, but then is a power puncher. So people are frightened of the takedown, which opens up the power punching, which allows for knockouts and stuff like that. Right. And that's really how Johnny Hendricks just started climbing the rankings. He has one of the fastest knockouts in welterweight history still to this day. Um, He obviously became champion. Uh, He arguably, I think a lot of us think he won that fight, beat GSP. Um, didn't get the decision that night, then came back and fought a crazy fight against Robbie Lawler. Um, and then I think uh, that was that first fight with Robbie Lawler, I think was the turning point because that was the real first time he faced adversity, uh, especially once he went on his title run. He faced adversity. Robbie Lawler came in the second time and Robbie Lawler's Robbie Lawler went out there, took over Lawler's the champ into Hendricks reign. So normally you think that's an, that was another close fight, by the way, the second Hendricks versus uh, Lawler fight. Um, champions are able to recover. Champions are doing that. But Johnny Hendricks never really trained at a real gym. He would run on his treadmill in his house, in his basement, in his garage. This dude was the UFC welterweight champion where Kamaru Usman sits today. That was Johnny Hendricks not too long ago. Um and then he starts missing weight because he doesn't have a nutritionist, right? So he's missing weight. gets knocked out by Stephen Thompson. Um, he's just going on a really bad losing streak out of nowhere. And then he decides to move up to middleweight. And at this point, his career is almost gone anyways. His first fight at middleweight, 185 pounds, a 15-pound difference from 170. He misses weight. So he couldn't make weight at 170. He goes up 15 pounds and misses weight again. And then uh, I don't even remember who he fought the first time at middleweight, but then he fought Paulo Costa at middleweight, which is like one Whoa. of those fights. How did that fight even get made looking back on it? Um, that for me, I think I really thought whenever he became champion that first time against Robbie Lawler, I really thought this guy was going to be at the top for a long time. I thought he was going to have a similar title reign to that of like Tyron Woodley because they had a similar style in that way, uh, especially whenever they were coming up that power punch explosive style with the takedowns, but man just didn't deliver. So even though he became champion for me, Johnny Hendricks is uh, the most wasted potential uh, in, in UFC history. I swear to God, I thought you were going to say John Jones there. I thought I, I say I, John jo- Look, even yeah, though, I even, swear though to God, I thought. even though he's had all the issues, you can't say John Jones because he has accomplished more than arguably two UFC fighters in the career. He, he has to be, he, he, and I don't like to admit it, but despite all the stuff, he has to be top three for me all time with everything he's accomplished. Um. Anyways, let's go ahead and move what, on to the. What about Hannon Burrell? No, nah, but dude, Hinton Burrell is not wasted potential because he was like champion for like years. And the only reason oh, he never recovered though. He never recovered, but that's I think he fits more under the category of like guys who yeah just like weren't able to recover, like took a loss yeah, and then just couldn't yeah, come for, back. Like for. you could put Cody Garbrandt in that category too. Exactly, but I wouldn't. That's the first shot, actually. Yeah, but, but you can't say Cody's a wasted potential because look at all he did whenever he was there. Anyways, and he's um, doing all that he can to get back at it too. That's the thing for me. It's not exactly. wasted if he's, he continues to try. Exactly. Johnny Hendricks didn't seem to try that much. Brock Lesnar didn't try hard enough. And uh, Keelan, I'm not sure about your guy. I don't know much about well, Lee Murray. He decided to <laughs> so, rob a bank. <laughs> rob a bank. That, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure he tried robbing a bank. I'm sure he yeah. tried. That you takes know, some effort. Tried again. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, let's go right. ahead and move on to the pick of the night. Uh, we have fans again for another fight night. I'm hoping it delivers because the last one was unreal. Curtis Blades, Chris Dawkins, uh, Hunter, who wins? I, I don't know. And I, I also <laughs> like, don't care that much either. Is that bad to say? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's been a bad fight night. This is just, it's just not great. We had so much good fight nights. I, I understand why they're throwing this shit at us. But I'm not happy that they are. Um, if you want my 
what the boss says goes right here. I'm going to go. It's going to be an extremely boring main event in which Curtis Blades uh, wrestles for five rounds, doesn't try to get out of full guard, though, very often, and accepts position, and he eventually ends up winning in one of the worst main events of the, of the night or of the, of the year, I'm going to say right here. And uh, why is that, guys? Because what the boss says goes. Nah, bro. Why do they? Why do they do this to us? <laughs> we just abuse <laughs> London. Now we got fucking Curtis Blades, man. <laughs> this is bullshit. I'll tell you what. There's another fight on this card that should be a headline in Kai Car France versus Ask uh, Askar Askarov. Oh, that's true. You know, of a main event. real quick, right yeah. here, right on the spot. Askar Askarov is my lock of the night right here. Why is that? Because what the boss says goes. <laughs> we got a lethargic what the boss says goes <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that tells you how much of a high we've been on the last few weeks we just feel like shit yes. <laughs> it, it, it was this entire time i was like oh 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 fuck you it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that, that is exactly it yeah, yeah. it's just let's see columbus fun. let's go like we talk about hated fighters we have on the podcast i think <laughs> curtis blades does not get enough hate you know <laughs> is that yeah. bad no, I've heard Curtis Blades versus uh, Alexander Rockich would be our ultimate, like... Oh, and that can happen. Yeah. <laughs> no, it can't happen. I thought Rockich was a heavyweight for a second. That no. would have been bad. We'd have to do a watch party for that one. And just, yeah. like, root against both for the meeting. Yeah, <laughs> down some NyQuil, maybe. And then, then we could do a watch party. <laughs> I, I don't need it. I'll fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, just double knockout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a um, knockout happening on the car. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was good. That was very good. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a bit shit. <laughs> um, I, I like Chris Dawkins. Don't get me wrong. I do like Chris Dawkins, but, you know, got flattened by Derek Lewis last time out. And Curtis Blades, I can't even remember what the hell he did last time out because nobody does. Not even Curtis Blades remembers what Curtis I remember. Did. I remember he walked out to Mortal Kombat theme in uh in vegas it was uh ufc 273 i think no i'm, I'm being stupid not 273 <laughs> uh the the one with uh volkanovsky and um ortega oh you were literally at that fight yeah yeah it was on that fight yeah card I, I was there i remember him walking out and he just didn't deliver very much well yeah. he won but yeah it just wasn't great sorry Peter. yeah that basically that's what happened last time curtis blades fought uh yeah it's just I don't really care. I'll throw my weight behind Hunter's pick because what the boss says goes, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's a write-off for me, that main event. The main event should be Kai Car France, Askar Askarov, because that's a banging flyweight fight. My guy Kai Car France is fighting. Um, I think he might have a very good chance of winning that. I also think he's in the title picture if he does win, following that hellacious knockout over Cody Garbrandt. And the co-main event needs to be Matt Brown, Brian Barberena. That's a banging fight. The immortal Matt Brown truly is immortal, it turns out. He's on a resurgence at welterweight, fighting a beast of a fighter, Brian Barberena. One of the best underrated fighters in the UFC. I'm a big, big fan of his. So there are a couple of really good fights in this card. It's just when you headline anything with Curtis Blades, you, you, you just want to walk the other way. Because he's boring. He just is. He, he, he doesn't excite anybody. He's not a Tom Aspinall against Alexander Volkov. You know, it's just, it's just, you know, yeah. you sort of turn your nose up on it like it is a bad smell, you know. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, truth be told, I'm not too invested in that main event. Curtis Blades by boring wrestling decision, I guess. He moves up again in the heavyweight rankings, but no one really cares because he's not exciting. No one wants to put him in a big fight because it's going to be boring. Uh, yeah, that's that's my prediction, I guess. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll take over. Um, so uh, it's, this, this is a pretty depressing tone and everything, you know, but I, I can't change it because I agree with you. This segment, we shouldn't have done pick of the night today. We should have done let's reorder the UFC fight night into the correct <laughs> order because uh, just it should be. The Masvidal discussion. <laughs> <laughs> It, it legitimately should be Askarov versus Kai Car France because I am pumped to see that fight because that is for who fights uh, the winner of Figueroa versus Moreno four, which is being booked. Um, and what a crazy fight that is! Kai Car France, so skilled, knockout power. Askar Askarov, one of the most talented and well-rounded guys on the roster. 
Um, so yeah, for my pick for that fight, I'm leaning toward Askar Askarov by a decision, but it's going to be a banger of a fight, and that one's almost guaranteed to be good. Another fight, the Matt Brown fight. That's another fight that you mentioned, Keelan. That's going to be amazing because both those guys are going to be going at it. Um, so if I was going to reorder it, it would be Kai Car France, Askar Askarov, because literally that is such a crazy good fight. Um, then I would do the co-main event. I would do Dawkins versus Blades because I think it is they are ranked heavyweights. Then I would do Matt Brown uh, versus Brian Barbarana because that fight is going to be amazing. Um, anyways, we're picking the main event. Uh, and I'm going to go a bit differently because even though I might think Curtis Blades is going to win, I refuse to pick him because we're not <laughs> picking guys we're going against on this podcast. I'll, you know, also, I'll respect Curtis Blades because you are a great fighter. We just don't like your style. And, and that's just, <laughs> yeah. that's just the, the basis. And I don't know. We're, we're being criticized. We're criticizing today, but that's what we're doing on the podcast. Anyways, um, I'm going to go Chris Dawkins by a TKO in round four because Curtis Blades will control him on the on the feet for three rounds, then get tired and Dawkins will pour it on for one flurry and actually drop Curtis Blades. That's my prediction for the main event. Uh, lock of the night, I'll do Askarov by decision. Um, I'm just hoping the fans inspire these fighters like they did UFC London, and maybe oh, we could get – I hope we're eating all of our words coming in the next podcast. But for the people listening, these are our predictions. Uh, and also, big thank you to everybody for listening to the podcast. As always, make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. Make sure to listen to us everywhere, literally everywhere, including iTunes and Spotify. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at MMA.Island and check out our website, MMAIsland.net. Again, everyone, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. And remember, the MMA Island podcast does not pull punches around here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we talk about anything and everything. Hashtag hate for Rackage. <laughs>